Welcome to Semi-Pro Tech and Gear. In this video, I'm gonna give you audio samples of six different options for overhead microphones. All right, so when it comes to microphone options for YouTube videos or any other video work that you do, especially if you're doing like a product review video or a video where you need to use your hands and there's a little bit of space in frame in front of you, it just doesn't work all that well to have a big microphone on screen. So that means either wearing a lavalier microphone or getting a microphone that you can mount out of frame, like a shotgun or other type of boom microphone. And like I said in the intro, I'm gonna give you audio samples of six different options for overhead microphones. We're gonna do two different sets of samples before I give you the full description of each microphone. So the first set of samples is going to be the way my room is set up right now. I actually don't have any of my normal sound treatment set up. After that first set of samples, I'm gonna put up all of my sound treatment that I usually use for my videos, and then we'll do a second set of samples so that you can hear the microphones in both scenarios. And then after the samples, I will give you a full rundown of the details of all six of the microphones. Let me just name them all really quick and then we'll dive right into the samples. So we have the Audio-Technica AT875R, the Rode VideoMic NTG, the Rode NTG3, the SE Electronics SE8, the Sennheiser MKE600, and the Sennheiser MKH416. And for all of the audio samples, I will not be applying any type of EQ or noise reduction or compression in post. I'm just gonna be normalizing the level to minus 16 LUFS, and I will also be applying a limiter with a minus one dB ceiling just to make sure that I don't have any uh, clipping going on in the samples. So let's dive in and do the first set of samples. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So what did you think? Which microphone sounded best in the environment without any significant sound treatment? Let me know down in the comments which one you think sounded best. And now let's check out the second round of samples where I have all of my normal sound treatment set up in the room that I would use for my YouTube videos. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. All right, so again, let me know in the comments which one you think sounded best after the second test. Was it the same microphone that you liked best from the first samples, or was it a different microphone? All right, so hopefully those two sets of samples provided you the chance to decide which of these microphones you thought sounded best for each environment. And now I would just wanna talk a little bit more about the details of each microphone, and we're gonna go in order of price. The most budget-friendly microphone in the test today is this one here, the Audio-Technica 875R. This is a short shotgun microphone designed by Audio-Technica for indoor dialogue use and video production. Now, the frequency response of this microphone is interesting. It's 90 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So the frequency response actually begins a little bit higher than many other microphones, and they did that intentionally to try and avoid any low-end rumble sound and really focus on the vocal range. Now, this is a regular XLR condenser microphone, so it does require phantom power. However, it actually can operate on a wide range of voltages. You can power the 875R with 11 to 52 volts of phantom power, so it should work just fine with any field recorder, even if it doesn't provide the sort of standard 48 volts of power. And you can get the 875R for $169, which is the MSRP, but sometimes you'll find it on sale for $149. 
Now, the next most expensive microphone on the list is the Rode VideoMic NTG, which comes in at $249. This is one of two microphones in the sample today that can provide its own power source. So if you like the sound of the VideoMic NTG, it's actually quite a good value for the features that you get. It's got a built-in rechargeable battery supply that you charge using the USB-C port. It can also function as a USB-powered microphone with your computer. So this is actually quite a nice microphone in a work-from-home setting if you want to use an out-of-camera microphone rather than a microphone that's visible on camera. It also has an adjustable gain range dial right on the end of the microphone, so you don't have to rely on your computer or camera's power to actually amplify the signal. It also can connect directly to a camera with the 3.5 millimeter port. And this is how we captured the audio from the VideoMic NTG today. We actually recorded this using the 3.5 millimeter out running into the 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input of the sound device's Mix Pre 6. It also offers a few additional features here via these buttons. It has a high pass filter at 75 and 150 Hertz. It also has a high shelf if you want a presence boost. There's also a minus 20 dB pad and the option to enable a safety track. The next step up in price is the SE Electronics SE8. This is a small diaphragm condenser microphone that goes for $279. Now this was the only small diaphragm condenser microphone in our test today, and the rest of the competitors were shotgun microphones. The SE8 has a cardioid polar pattern compared to our shotgun microphones, which are all gonna have some form of super cardioid or low bar pickup pattern. One thing that's worth pointing out is that if you move around a lot in your videos, not get up and walk around, but more just move your head around in your videos, a small diaphragm condenser with a cardioid pickup pattern will be a little bit more forgiving of those movements. Whereas a shotgun microphone has a very, very focused pickup area directly in front of it. So if you move out of range left to right of the pickup pattern, the sound of your voice is going to fall off and sound off axis. So keep that in mind when making the selection of microphone for the type of videos that you make. Now the SE8 does have a couple of manual switches on it. It has a minus 10 or a minus 20 dB pad, and it also has an 80 Hertz or 160 Hertz high pass filter available. All right, stepping up in price again, now we have our first sort of medium length shotgun here, and it's the Sennheiser MKE 600. This is the second microphone in our test today that can provide its own power, and that comes via a AA battery, and you simply unscrew the barrel of the microphone to get to that battery compartment. Now you can operate the MKE 600 with normal phantom power if you have it to offer, and you simply leave the power switch in the off position if you're using it with an interface or recorder that can supply the phantom power. And it also features a single position high pass filter switch. However, the single option here is at 100 Hertz. So that might be a little bit high as far as the normal vocal range. It might make the sound a little bit thin if you switch that on. Now the MKE 600 is also the only microphone in our test that really comes with any accessories worth noting. Because it can power itself, they do provide an XLR to 3.5 millimeter TRS adapter. And that enables you to plug your MKE 600 directly into the microphone port on your camera if you're using the built-in battery power. Now this is a TRS cable, not a TRRS cable. So this adapter will not allow you to connect the MKE 600 to a smartphone or tablet's headphone jack. And if I haven't mentioned the price of the MKE 600 already, it comes in at $329. Next up, we have the Rode NTG3. This was designed to be a professional shotgun microphone in the realm of competition with the Sennheiser MKH416. The NTG3 has a retail price of $699, although you can find it on the market for closer to the $600 price range. There are no special features on the NTG3, and the same will be true for the MKH416. They are just shotgun condenser microphones that require phantom power to operate and have no other switches or features. The NTG3 has a self noise of 13 dBA and a frequency response of 40 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. The sensitivity is just a touch higher than the MKH416, which we'll talk about next. It's minus 30 dB. The Sennheiser MKH416 is the standard bearer professional shotgun microphone. It has a sensitivity of minus 32 dB, a self noise level of 13 dBA, and a frequency response of 40 Hz to 20 kHz. So in terms of specifications, it's very closely matched to the Rode NTG3. But the big difference between them is the price, because the MKH416 goes for $999, 
And as I mentioned, the NTG3 goes for $699, but sometimes you can find it for even $600 on the open market. But if any of the other four sounded just as good or better in your opinion than these two, then you can save yourself quite a bit of money here because all of them are under $500, all the way down to potentially $150 or $160 for the 875R. Well, that's it for this overhead microphone comparison. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button so YouTube can show the video to more people and subscribe to the Semi-Pro Tech channel so that you can be notified when I come out with future videos. Thanks everybody, see you next time.